Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, I want to, you know, thank, thank everybody for coming. I want to thank all of the uh, special guests that came. And by the way, I do not remember at this point in the day all 23 or 24 of the names. So if I start listing them, I'm just going to be embarrassed because, why are you left this person out, you idiot? Um, so thanks a lot for coming to the Ignatz Awards. All right, thanks a lot for coming to SPX. We really appreciate it. Um, and I want to do some thank yous for the people who helped make this happen. Uh, first, I want to start with the Reverend Michael Thomas. All right. And, uh, and this year, helping him with the social media is Francesca Lynn. Where's Francesca? She's still around here. Um, playing on exhibitors' rooms, we had Sam Marks and Jamie Johnson. Hey. Uh, for, the, for, the, for, their, for their first year, I think they did a phenomenal job. Danathan Mejia and Rob Cloud doing all the programming. Okay. And uh, I also want to thank Frank Santoro and the Cartoons Workshop people from Pittsburgh for the programming that they put on with all their training classes. Okay. And the, you know, you, everyone sees them in the registration booths and things like that. And all of that is led by uh, Megan Raley, Bailey Kung, and uh, Yitzhak, Yitzhi Paul. All right, so thank you. All right. Our, uh, our senior vice president of operations is Sarah Burnett. Okay, so she, is, she does so much stuff, all right. Uh, I, and by the way, speaking of volunteers, um, Megan Bailey, does anybody know, what was the number of volunteers that were actually working over the, over the weekend? 90. 90. So there were 90 people that, uh, I want to thank, of course, Dan and his, for his first year as the Lord God of the Ignatz Awards. And, and we're both equally dressed for sleep right now, okay? <laughs> I want to thank uh, Eden for stepping into the press role and helping out there after a very long run as SPX direct, as uh, Ignatz director. I want to thank uh, Catherine Fraz for um, doing all the graphic novel gift program stuff. This year we gave 300 and something graphic novels, 310, to uh, the Philadelphia Free Library System. And, and if I'm not mistaken, Catherine, have we gone over 2,000 volumes given to di different? Yes. Yeah, so we're, we're now over 2,000 books we've given to library systems from Virginia up through Pennsylvania. And, and every single one of those books was done by an SPXer. Wow. Okay. So, yeah, so anyway, I like that one myself. Um, there is no SPX without Rusty and Joe, okay? <laughs> I want to thank uh, um, my sister Linda. Where's Linda? Back there with my niece Kyla. All right? We are training Kyla to be my replacement. And then after her, my grandniece, who's now four months old. So we're I just want to let you know we're setting up a dynasty. This is like the pharaohs, okay? Yes. Uh, and, and Megan, is Megan? Oh, no, she's not here tending to Sophie, who's going to take over in about 20 years. Um, and then certainly last but not least, I want to go ahead and especially Frank, thank Kelly and Claire for allowing us or allowing me to influence them to do a slumber party prom, which is why... I have this because I needed an excuse to wear this in public. <laughs> so uh, j just a couple of things real quick. Um, let me see. Oh, I got to do this. Right. Here we go. Once again, we sponsored the National Book Festival. Uh, we've been bringing people like Gene Yang, Linda Barry, the Hernandez brothers onto the big stage. This is the largest book festival in the United States, and we bring people from the SPX community over to this other world and give them this exposure up on, up on the big stage. Yes, we will fund, okay? Yeah. 
All right, we will do that. Um, and also with the Library of Congress, I just wanted to announce, they just announced this, the SPX web archive at the Library of Congress is now up and operational. All right, so we've been capturing websites, and the, one of the most important ones we captured, I got a call from James Kachalka about two or three years ago, that the server that contained all of his diary comics going back to 1998 was about to be decommissioned. And I got a hold of the people at the Library of Congress, and that's now preserved as part of the SPX web library, okay? So they, they've taken, like for instance, uh, Kate Beaton's website, and I, th I think there are like 10 other websites, 15 other websites that we've already gone ahead. We've, we've gone ahead, sucked them up into the Library of Congress, and they're preserved as is, okay? For anybody going, you know, so like a thousand years from now, people can log on, what was Kate doing, okay? <laughs> um, one last thing before I, I turn this over to Mike Thomas. Uh, where, is Barry Matthews here? Barry, okay. I've loved Barry and, and, and Secret Acres for years. This is Barry's last SPX. He's turning over the reins of Secret Acres. And we got to give Barry a hand, OK? He's going to undoubtedly bludgeon me to death for embarrassing him like this in public, but it's a risk that I was willing to take. Just let me change into something different before you bludgeon me, okay? All right, so without any further ado, because we've got a lot of stuff, I want to bring Mike Thomas up, say, say a few words, and then we're going to rock and roll through the whole thing. Thanks a lot, everybody. Oh. And in case you didn't notice, there's a slumber party prom that's going to happen right after this, okay? Hey, everybody. Woo. Yeah, all right. Um, thanks for letting me take a moment. Uh, I, I want to ask, who's, uh, well, whose first SPX was this? Anybody? Wow. Woo. Amazing. Amazing. How many, how many have done five or more? Also amazing. Ten? Fifteen. Yes, amazing, uh, incredible, right? That this thing has been going strong since 1994. And uh, what makes it so special is it's the kind of place that we can come together as the family that we choose. And in the last year, we, uh, we lost a member of our family that was very dear to us. And we want to take a moment to acknowledge his passing. And that is our friend Ed. I know he was uh, loved by many of you, especially those in the Chicago universe of comics. and. Um, I thought long and hard about coming up to try to say a few words about Ed's legacy to us as a steering committee and as a friend. And I thought, can I wear an ascot to do that? And, <laughs> and I decided actually at dinner, I was persuaded that no one would have appreciated that more than Ed. Uh, and if you came and you sang at karaoke uh, last night, that was also in Ed's honor because it was a tradition that he adored. Uh, uh, and the comics that he wrote teaching you how to karaoke are in the Library of Congress collection, I believe. Uh, where they'll be preserved for all time, uh, along with some of his other work, and everything that we've ever published, including some of the, co the comics that he wrote about his cancer struggle that appeared on the SPX Tumblr and other places. And uh, so I'm glad to take a moment in front of you to share in our uh, happiness in his memory, our grief in his passing. And if you sat with me at SPX uh, at any, for any length of time, I probably said something along the lines of, all the work that we do programmatically to preserve your work, to protect your work, to promote your work, is so crucially important. But if we're about anything that's really vital, it is about uh, providing a place for all of us to try to find and be our best selves and to share that with one another. And I hope that's something that you find here. I know it's something that Ed found here, and I'm so privileged to share this moment with you. And I hope tonight uh, we'll celebrate together uh, in that spirit. So thank you very much. Thanks. 
Yeah, that's right. Um, so yeah, hi everybody. I'm Dan Stafford. Um, uh, hey, thanks, Warren. Um, I'm uh, I'm really excited to be uh, helping to organize the Ignatz Awards. Um, it's an extremely thrilling honor to be able to do it. Um, I love, like everyone here, I love comics like crazy, and to get, the, the best part about comics for me is when you get a package and you open it up and you're like, oh, there's so much potential here. Um, and when you coordinate uh, the Ignatz Awards, you get 600 of those packages um, and make your wife uh, question some decisions that you've made. But, um, uh, but it really was incredible this year to go through all the submissions and just look at the hard work and the heart and the soul and the love and the humor and the sadness and everything that all of you have put into your work. And so I just want to say, excellent job, everybody. Um, do that here. I want to say a special thanks to uh, the folks that worked on the, the jury this year, uh, Neil Bordeaux, Glynis Fox, Sarah Lotman, Trungles, and, and David Willis. Let's give them a big hand. I was just winging that whole thing. Um, but so the, the jury works really hard. They get all the books sometime in mid-June, and by mid-August, they have to have read all of them. Uh, that works out to, you know, it's like three to five significant comics a day that they have to, to go through to read. It's a really significant undertaking. And I can say from talking to each of them and working with them through the process, they took it very seriously. And so I, I really uh, was shocked and impressed by uh, their commitment. Um, I also want to take a quick word and, and talk about Comixology. For a number of years now, they have been the sponsor of the Ignatz Awards. Uh, normally, Chip Mosier comes up and, and talks about this stuff. He couldn't be here, so he asked me, he wrote an email, he asked me to read. So I'm going to read this as Chip. <laughs> However, I will not be doing the ticket dance that he normally does <laughs> for numerous reasons. <laughs> I'm good. Uh, we'll get there. We'll get there, everybody. Uh, so this is Chip. Uh, this year marks the 10th anniversary of the founding of Comixology, the digital comics buying and reading service. Comixology was founded by three partners in 2007, and seven years later was purchased by Amazon, and three years after that, we remain committed to promoting the comics uh, to new readers worldwide. Part of that commitment is our sponsorship of the Ignatz Awards. And while we've been celebrating our 10th anniversary this year, I wanted to also celebrate our fifth anniversary of sponsoring the Ignatz Awards. SPX is a singular institution in the comic scene, giving a voice to such a vital part of our industry. It's always an honor to be able to be part of the Ignatz uh, Awards and to help recognize the talent that exists in the SPX community. I hope all of you know about Comixology's self-publishing service, Comixology Submit. If not, Chris Murphy's here. Chris, you want to stand up and wave? This is Chris. You can definitely uh, talk to him and ask him. Um, and I'm sure he'll be at the after party hanging out, uh, and he'll be happy to answer any questions. Um, he, uh, I'm sorry, uh, he says he loves coming to SPX and uh, getting to spend the weekend with everybody. He's very sad not to be able to attend this year, but that said, uh, uh, he's going to let Shannon Wheeler dole out all of the drink tickets. So, <laughs> go bug him. Um, so yes, yeah, so Shannon has all the drink tickets this year. Um, uh, I want to say just a, a couple quick words, and then I'll introduce uh, Caitlin, our host uh, for the evening, MC for the evening. Uh, the first is uh, we had incredible voter turnout. Uh, over 1,200 ballots were cast this year, which is incredible. It almost feels like something really significant happened recently that made everyone realize that making your voice heard matters. <laughs> Um, also, amazingly, in two of our categories, uh, the winner was decided by one vote, what? which is incredible. In all my one year of doing this, I've never seen it <laughs> be that close. Um, but I just want to make a little plug here, voting does matter. Um, the next thing I want to say is that I typically have done all of the work for this, uh, the PowerPoint and everything else, uh, between the hours of like 4.30 in the morning and 6 in the morning, um, or after like 11 o'clock at night. And so any errors that are in there, uh, I take full ownership of. I truly apologize if they exist. Please know I have the best of intentions with everything ever. Um, <laughs> And uh, the last thing I want to say is that if you do win an award this evening, the bricks are not attached to the stands. <laughs> so when, you know, Gilbert Hernandez goes to give you a brick, don't drop it on your foot. Um, 
<laughs> or his foot. Yeah, that would be that would be bad too. Uh, so with that, I'd like to hand it over to my good friend uh, Caitlin McGurk. Hello. Uh, I'm, I'm Caitlin McGurk. I'm one of the curators at the Billy Ireland Cartoon Library Museum in Columbus, Ohio. Um, <laughs> thanks, Dan, for inviting me to do this. I hope you don't regret it. Thank you, Warren, for everything you do. And thanks all of you, a very large crowd, actually, for, uh, for being here this time. Um, I, uh, I wrote a speech. <clears throat> so uh, when I was 19 years old, Chester Brown called me from a payphone in Canada. Uh, that does not go where you would think that maybe it does, but so just don't go there. Uh, I was actually um, in undergrad, and I had just fallen in love with his book, I Never Liked You, which was recommended to me by my professor at the time, Dr. Isaac Cates, who might be in here somewhere. I don't know. Thank you, Dr. Isaac Cates. Anyway, um, I decided to write Chester uh, this really long letter. Ask, I obviously got his address. To ask him some questions about how memory works in comics and share some ideas with him that I had about it. Mailed it off and obviously not expecting to hear anything back, let alone a personal phone call. You can imagine how totally shocked I was when I picked up the phone one afternoon and Chester Brown was on the other line. Um, I can barely remember what we talked about because all I could think the entire time and literally all that I wrote down while taking notes about our conversation was, holy shit, I'm on the phone with Chester Brown. I'm on the phone with Chester Brown. I'm 19, and I'm on the phone with this person who created this thing that I love and is actually willing to talk to me about it. That was when it dawned on me that cartoonists and comics and the community uh, surrounding this is accessible, that, it, it, that I could actually know these people who are making this stuff, that I could meet them, and that if I played my cards right, I could actually be involved somehow. The first time I attended SPX was actually about a decade ago, and at that time I was painstakingly self-publishing my own not good mini comics and zines, and thinking and assuming that the only way to actually be involved with this community was by being a cartoonist. The truth is, I never wanted to be a cartoonist. <laughs> I just wanted to be a part of comics somehow. And maybe that makes me a poser, I don't know. But uh, I really just wanted to be surrounded by cartoonists and comic art. I wanted to write about it and support it and care for it uh, in whatever way that I could. Because comics are great. And because cartoonists are the best people I've ever met. That's you guys. <laughs> um, <clears throat> So, like I said, I'm one of the curators at a place called the Billy Ireland Cartoon Library Museum, one of the largest comics collections in the entire world. Um, and out there, beyond the teaching and tours and curating that I do, a big part of my job is basically preserving the legacy of long dead and also currently living cartoonists. Making sure that their work is cared for, that it's preserved, and that it's promoted and basically lives, lives on. It ha has a life long after they've passed away. The only other comics-related event that I've been asked to MC in my entire life was also this year. Uh, it was actually a memorial ceremony uh, for the great underground cartoonists Jay Lynch and Skip Williamson, both of whom died exactly six months ago. Um, I had the incredible honor of getting to know the both of them, especially Jay, who became a really dear friend of mine because of my work at the Billy Ireland. And at that memorial, and some of you may have been there, uh, we recollected and celebrated the lives of these cartoonists. So I stood by and listened while people like Art Spiegelman and Howard Cruz and Diane Newman and Bill Griffith and Dennis Kitchen gave remarks about the old days of growing up in comics together. Stories from the past and the pain of seeing them go. So to be here now, six months later, I'm seeing the Ignats in, in contrast with that, I feel like I'm able to see this incredible lifespan of a community. One that has given us, uh, one, one that a lot of us have had a chance to grow up in and that if we're lucky enough like them, we'll get to grow old in together too. Whether this is your first time attending SPX or your fifth or your last, you are part of it now. Uh, during, the first, uh, during my first SPX, attending as a young, crusty cartoonist to table with my old pal, Ken and Rubenstein, uh, I was so overwhelmed with anxiety that I spent half of the time crying in my car, which uh, is what I'm going to do right after this. Uh, just kidding, I don't have my car with me, so you can find me in the bathroom if you would like to. Uh, yeah, if I could borrow a car, that would be great. Um, what I want to say is, uh, SPX can be so amazing, but also so intense. 
You guys know that. Uh, some of you are here for your very first time, as we saw, a lot of you actually, and that is so wonderful. You made it here, hell yeah, welcome. It's like Olive Garden, when you're here, your family. <laughs> so that's literally the only joke I wrote for this entire speech. Um, uh, anyway, you may sell a ton of comics, you may sell one comic, you may cry in the bathroom or your car, you may fall in love, or you may meet someone who's gonna be your best friend. Or maybe you'll just get to experience a chocolate fountain for the first time. But whatever it is that happens, you're here now with us. You are part of it. So if you see if someone that you want to talk to, talk to them. If you buy a comic that you like, don't just follow that person on Tumblr. Write them a goddamn letter. Cartoonists like getting mail. My point is that none of us have to be strangers to each other. Uh, there's a lot of really bad shit going on in the world, if you have not noticed. More this year than ever, it seems. Most of it based on differences or causing division among people. But at least all of us here have one thing in common. We love comics. Maybe, and I know, not all the same comics, but similar enough ones that we'd pay money to, that we may or may not have, to get ourselves all the way out here from spots all over the country, let alone abroad, to do this thing together, and that's great. Uh, for some of us in this room, comics and this community, this is everything. And for many of us, at some point in our lives or another, this is the only thing. So with that in mind, if I can be candid for just a second, with that shared spirit in your mind, I just wanna say, don't be dicks to each other. Uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna elaborate further on that, but you know what I'm talking about. Just don't be a dick. On the internet or in person, just, just cut it out. Because <laughs> comics are great uh, and life is short. So um, I feel incredibly grateful for the life that I found in comics and indebted to all of you for letting me be a part of it. So now, on with the show. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So the first award is going to be for Outstanding Story, and it's going to be given by Simon Hanselman, New York Times best-selling author of the Meg Mog Owl stories. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Pickles. Uh, I was going to answer to uh, Brick House by the Commodores on my phone, but there's no service. Uh, <laughs> so less fanfare than I'd hoped for. And I left my wig at home and feel unprepared. You asked me last night to do this. Uh, and I'm getting really emotional over there from these speeches and testimonials. And I met my wife here three years ago. You're talking about the community. and the, yeah, Anyway, it's, it's, it feels <laughs> getting like weepy over there. Uh, so yeah. I don't have my song, so I think I'll just break into it and we'll get these, uh, these bricks flying out there into the audience in a gentle manner. All right, so the nominees for, nominees for Outstanding Story. It, it says Simon Hanselman Dash after that, but that was confusing initially. But Okay, the, the actual nominees are Diana's Electric Tongue by Caroline Nowak. Beautiful bricks. Uh, March, book three by John Lewis, Senator John Lewis, Andrew Aiden, and I don't know how to pronounce this one. Is it Nate Powell? Nate Powell? Nate Poo? Anyway, March, book three, okay. Uh, my favorite thing is Monsters by Emil Ferris. Okay. Beautiful. The fourth nominee is Small Enough from Diary Comics by Dustin Harbin. All right, this is a hot race. This is a contested battle. This is uh, the final nominee. This is Too Hot to Be Cool from Elements Anthology by Matty Gonzalez. It's getting hot in here. It's the first award. I'm being given an envelope. Wow, this is really exciting. I was really nervous to do this. It's, uh, this is crazy. I get to be the first to know. I'm just going to like look and just like... Oh, shit. <laughs> Diana's electric tongue with Carolyn Nowak. Oh. 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 Oh.
Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank and you. a break. Here you go. Thank you. Bravo. Nice Thank fun. you. Can I shake your hand? Nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, shut up, all right? Shh, shh, y'all. Um, I should have written a, a thing probably, right? Uh, but I didn't. So I'll thank all the important people, like everyone in this room. <laughs> Thanks for being here to witness this, because holy shit, this is so fucking cool. Um, La I actually won Ignatz last year, and I'm not mentioning that because it's so cool, but it's because I didn't thank my husband when I got it. I thanked like everyone else I knew except for him, so I'm gonna thank him first, even though he's not here, but he endured a shitload of neglect <laughs> like for this book, so I'm gonna thank him first. Thank you, Sean, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Um, and I really wanna thank, <laughs> Whatever you're up to, who knows? <laughs> um, and then I want to thank all my good friends because they're so good, especially Carta Monier, who probably many of you know because she's a huge influence on me um, and all my other beautiful friends. I, I'm too nervous to say much else, but this is pretty fucking cool. Oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> there's no kids here. Go, whatever. Bye. Thanks. Yeah, feeling good. Okay, so the next award is going to be for our Outstanding Mini Comic, uh, presented by Mardu, author of Sky and Stereo, one of the Village Voices' Outstanding Comics of 2015. God, it's so nice to be here. Um, SPX has a special place in my heart because it was my first ever comic show in North America. And that was 12 years ago. And I've got to say, back then it seemed pretty rinky-dink compared to what it is now because this <laughs> shit just got really real. This is huge. So, wow. And, you know, you mentioned Overwhelm. And um, Tom Spurgeon came by my table earlier and he said he was looking forward to seeing this show break me. And I was like, I'm unbreakable. <laughs> like Kimmy Schmidt. Uh, and at six o'clock this evening, this show broke me and I had to go to my room and have a bath and just sit quietly in the dark. It really <laughs> broke me. And so whilst I was having my little retreat in my room, I was reading my Zen book and there was a quote in it about how when you've mastered an art form, there's only a couple of like doors open to you because there's just a couple of things you can do really, really well because you're a master. But if you have beginner mind, then all these doors are open to you. There's so many possibilities. And I think that spirit of beginner mind is what the Zen master tries to keep so you have all these doors open. And that made me think of mini comics and presenting this award because when you get a mini comic, it can be like $5 or less and you can trade it, you can stick it in your pocket, you can give it to a mate, you know? And it's like a little doorway to somebody's soul and I think it's so beautiful. And I actually, my, my husband threw by in a mini comic in um, Bristol in a really stinky room. So <laughs> I'm living proof as how like mini comics can change your life. So this is a special award and I'm really excited to present it, so should I get on with it? Yeah. Okay. The nominees for Outstanding Mini Comics are Our Tale of Woe by Karen Katz and Geffen Raffaelli. <laughs> the Man Who Came Down from the Attic Stairs, sorry, The Man Who Came Down the Attic Stairs by Celine Liu. Reverse Flaneur by M. Sabine Rear. <laughs> same Place, Same Time by Anne Zhu. <laughs> and Tenderhearted by Hazel Nulevant. And the winner is Tenderhearted by Hazel Nielevent. Hi, 
Okay, um, thanks everybody. Uh, I just wanted to say that this festival means so much to me and this community means so much to me and um, I just, I really appreciate people's support of my work. Um, and if you read Tender Hearted, you would know it's about 50% about an abusive relationship and I'm really glad that people both support that work and have supported me personally. That means a lot. And that's the kind of community that I want to see. Um, and I don't want to see any community where abusers are welcomed and their victims are the ones who feel unsafe or like they have to go. So thanks for not being that. Let's, and thank you for being here and being great. And this means everything to me. Okay, next up we have the award for Outstanding Anthology, which will be given by Tony Breed, wonderful dancer, DJ, renowned cartoonist of Finn and Charlie Are Hitched and Muddler's Beat. I didn't, I didn't expect to be the second person with blue hair in a row on stage. <laughs> Uh, when I was about 17, I went to the, uh, growing up in Providence, Rhode Island, uh, a little baby gay, and I went to a bookstore, the College Hill Bookstore, and there was an anthology called uh, Gay Comics, with an X. <laughs> and I bought it, because it's just comics, it doesn't mean anything. And, um, <laughs> yeah, my mom found that book, and that was a whole thing, but that's a topic for another day. Um, but uh, that book was so important to me because uh, it gave me, as a person who was, uh, it was the 80s, there were not a lot of public gay people that you could see and a lot of people were dying. This book gave me this multiple views from all these different people. And so um, anthologies are important. They do great things. And um, you know, you may, uh, your, your anthology may be inspiring the next person to become a cartoonist and uh, you know, because that the comics in that were some of the inspiration for why I am making comics, which is how I'm up here. And hi. Anyway, so <laughs> uh, can you tell that I planned none of this? All right. Um, so the uh, the nominees are Alphabet, the LGBTQAIU creators from Prism Comics, edited by John Macy and Tara Avery. Comic Book Slumber Party's Deep Space Canine, edited by Hannah K. Chapman. <laughs> Elements, Fire, an anthology by creators of color, edited by St Tanika Stotts. Power and Magic, the Queer Witch Comics Anthology, edited by Jomet Gill. <laughs> and Spanish Fever, stories by the new Spanish cartoonists, edited by Javier Olivares and Santiago Garcia. <laughs> it's so exciting. Get to see this first, like Simon said. This is really actually much cooler than I expected. Elements by Tanika Stotts. Uh, receiving for Tanika will be Shivana Sutter. Have a brick. Oh, thank you. Uh, I'm I'm not. Tanika, but I'm about her size, so this will be done t to scale. Uh, she did give me some words to say that I didn't make a fool of myself, though. Uh, this is from Tanika. Hello, folks. First, I would like to say thank you for voting for creatives uh, of color. Thank you for recognizing their time, talent, and their voices. This project started due to a lack of diverse creators in an industry built around imagination, and it will sadly have to continue until this in Industry realizes we're not mere figments of imagination. Until then, I'll keep putting out badass books. She will. <laughs> These creators will continue to put out badass works. We will. 
And we thank you for not just your support, but because diversity is not just a buzzword for marketing. Mm -hmm. And I don't have a wife, but Tanika is thank thanking her wife <laughs> for allowing her to go through many late nights to her co-editor, to the entire production team, the contributors, and oh my god, for me, for accepting <laughs> the Stang Award. <laughs> Awesome. Okay. All right. Next, we have the award for Outstanding Series, presented by J.T. Yost, who runs Birdcage Bottom Books and just released the anthology Bottoms Up, a collection of stories about addiction. Hi, everybody. Uh, so I had a, a little shtick that I was going to do, and it had dad jokes. It had... Uh, you know, I got real meta, had some self-referential stuff going on, but my wife said, you know, that I wasn't funny, and so <laughs> I'm just going to stick with the fact that, you know, I'm, like, sincerely and truly honored to be in this room with all of these incredibly talented people. Um, and I'm everybody, I feel like, you know, most of you probably deserve a, uh, an award of some sort, so thank you for all being here. Uh, this is Outstanding Series. We've got Chester 5000 by Jess Fink. <laughs> Crickets by Sammy Harkham. <laughs> Frontier, edited by Ryan Sands. Maleficium by Sabine Cauldron. I love that cover. The Old Woman by Rebecca Mock. And the award goes to, remember that award show where they gave the wrong envelope? That didn't happen. It's Chester 5000. Just <laughs> think. I'm not very half nervous in my belly. <sighs> I wrote a thing. Uh, but I wrote it at a time when I wasn't nervous, so let's see if I can get through it. <laughs> this will be a fun journey for you and I to take. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. This is amazing. It's absolutely amazing to me. Um, I never thought that I could win an award for my Victorian robot sex comic. <laughs> it, no, it did not even occur to me. Um, SPX was the first anthology that, um, it was the first publication that ever published any of my work. Uh, so this is something coming full circle for me. Um, and I love SPX and I've been coming for so many years, so it's, it's very important to me. Um, when I was first starting out, I did work for um, Fanographics erotic imprint, Eros, and back then it seemed like uh, if comics had a hard time getting respect, then erotic comics were gonna have a hard even more time <laughs> getting respect, like they weren't even on the table. Um, so uh, this is very, amazing to me. <laughs> uh, there's a comic I made where I'm an old woman and I'm on my deathbed and someone is like bending in to listen as I eke out my last words and I whisper, erotica is a legitimate genre. <laughs> <laughs> and then I die and they look through all my stuff and they're like, man, this old lady's dirty. <laughs> um, but I really believe that, that sexuality and romance have a lot to say about human nature. Um, uh, so, and I'm so happy to be part of this movement and surrounded by all the amazing erotic comics that are coming out now because it wasn't always this way. You used to have to dig through a lot of like sexist garbage to get through anything that would like really actually turn you on. <laughs> um, and I think that uh, right now there are just, our cup runneth over with like amazing diverse voices uh, 
that are empathetic and kind and just beautiful. And I really think that like, um, it's sort of thanks to the internet and it's sort of thanks to uh, publishers that believed in it at the time and it's thanks to just making the kind of art that you want to see in the world because you know that there are people out there who also believe in it. Um, so there are a few people I'd like to thank. I'd like to thank Top Shelf for being the kind of publisher that believed in me because they were always my favorite publisher and I love them. Uh, I would like to thank my amazing partner, Eric. He's a genius. He makes amazing comics. Uh, he's a wonderful boy and he is my best friend. And he's right over there and he's very cute. Um, but don't hit on him because he's mine. Um, I'd like to thank my storytelling teacher from my time at SVA, Tom Hart. Tom is amazing. And he was the first teacher to encourage me to draw erotica and he told me that I draw great boobs, which I hold in my heart forever. Um, I'd like to thank my family for supporting me in my art endeavors and for not being too weirded out that I make erotic comics for a living. Uh, and I'd just like to thank everyone who has supported me and followed me and been a friend for the past decade coming up on the internet because internet friends are real friends. <laughs> and thank you to the Ignex Committee because this is amazing and it means the world to me. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, moving right along. Next we have uh, the award for Outstanding Online Comic presented by Hannah K. Lee, author of Language Barrier, debuting this month from Koyama Press. Uh, I didn't realize presenters were supposed to make little speeches, but I just wanted to say briefly, um, as a relative newcomer, what an honor it is to be involved with a community so filled with delightful, intentional, thoughtful, intelligent people. So thank you for that. Um, let's dive in. The first nominee is uh, Disability in the Age of Trump by Amanda Skirty. <laughs> and then we have The Meek by Dershing Helmer. Normal Person, Perfect Main Vacation by Lauren Weinstein. <laughs> That's Not Who We Are by Mike Dawson. And Woman World by Amander Dhaliwal. The winner is The Meek by Dershing Helmer. Uh, I'm clearly not her, but she, uh, she couldn't be here. She asked me to say, uh, I'm not able to be there and don't have any, anyone to accept. I suppose on the off chance that I win, you can casually skip the acceptance part. <laughs> <laughs> Hello again. Okay, uh, next is Promising New Talent, being awarded by uh, Tilly Walden, author of the end of, uh, en the end of the Summer, I Love This Part, and the just released Spinning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my turn, okay. Uh, I also didn't know I needed to prepare anything, uh, just that this is a really exciting award to present and that uh, everyone in this category is really phenomenal and I just uh, am really honored to talk about them briefly. So uh, let's do this. Um, the nominees for Promising New Talent are Kelly Basto for Year Long Summer, Margot Farrick for yours. Odd Cook for Run from the Oath Anthology. Isabella Rotman for Long Black Veil. Oh. 
and Bianca Eunice for Say Her Name. Oh no, it's stuck. Hold on. Okay, got this. And the award goes to Bianca Eunice for Say Her Name. I'm not Bianca, uh, <laughs> but um, I am her designated little sister. So she gave me something to say. Um, first, she wants to apologize for not being able to accept this award. Um, but she personally wants to thank everyone for choosing this story um, to be worthy of. And thanks her, oh, little sis. <laughs> Um, she starts with, um, most of you may already know this, but everything that happened in this comic is in fact true. I would love to say that this is an isolated moment, but unfortunately for many black people in POC, this is our everyday. Just yesterday when I was bopping to New Order, this woman tried to rip my hair out simply because she didn't like it, which I can relate to. And in that moment, I felt small and afraid. I felt this power over me that I feel every time my oppressor tries to remind me that this world seems, that this world sees me less than human. And while I, oh crap, it went out. <laughs> Sorry, shut off. And while I can still feel her hands in my um, head, or I can still see the officers with their hands on their guns as they surrounded me, I do my best to rise above. It's not an easy task. It sounds romantic and truthfully, it's unfair to constantly ask the oppressed to rise when it is our lives that are constantly being compromised but we do it anyway. I do it every day. I head to wise words of Beyonce and take these awful, terrible, no good moments and make lemonade. So thank you all for enjoying the lemonade I made. Thank you for taking the time to uplift my voice. I started making comics because I wanted to hear a voice that sounded like my own. And hopefully today is just the beginning of hearing more black and round voices in comics. We have so many stories to tell and not just sad and scary ones, but ones about love and ordinary stories about life. We have so much to live for and if we just allowed freedom to live. Anyway, black lives matter. Black girls are magical and as on brand as possible, she also says, oh yes, Keanu Reeves is still fine. <laughs> Okay, next up is uh, the award for Outstanding Comic, which will be presented by uh, Sam Bosma, Ignat's winning author uh, and illustrator of fantasy sports. Hey, everybody. Speak up! <laughs> uh, the list of outstanding things to come out of the past year is, shall we say, limited, uh, but it does include the following comics. <laughs> <laughs> the nominees are <laughs> Canopy by Kareen Bernadou. Libby's Dad by Eleanor Davis. <laughs> Public Relations Number 10 by Lila Sturges, Dave Justice, Steve Rolston, and Annie Wu. <laughs> Sunburning by Kyler Roberts. and Your Black Friend by Ben Passmore. <laughs> the winner is Your Black Friend. <laughs> I'm 
met you before, actually. I was really nice to Hey y'all. Um, how you doing? How much time I got? Um, <laughs> this is great. This is really chill. Um, I forgot to vote because I was at the Juggalo parade. Um, <laughs> um, so I have to, this is like, yeah, this is wild crazy. Um, I had like a bunch of, I don't know, coffee, and I was thinking, I was like, maybe you should prepare, and I was like, that's the bad energy to put in the room. Imagine failure. Um, that's what my mom taught me. Um, so I don't know, I was just thinking about George Harriman. He is another uh, New Orleanian, um, uh, another brown man that depicted um, relentless police and brick throwing. Um, so we got all that common. Um, I wrote this uh, shortly before um, a man named Alton Sterling was murdered by the police in Baton Rouge. Um, he was selling CDs in a parking lot and they shot him. Um, I know, tone shift. Um, and he was not, uh, and the pleas were not tried. Um, and uh, and uh, yeah, that's a thing. Um, I wrote it because uh, I realized that the, uh, the geography of my existence and uh, friends of mine that looked like me um, was invisible to a lot of people. Um, and that is, you know, endlessly frustrating. Um, and I felt like if I wrote about it, um, I don't know, maybe that would, that would, uh, maybe the knowledge itself, you know what I mean, would uh, help sponsor um, ethical acts. Um, it's crazy because, uh, you know, at the time, uh, the conversation, you know, was a lot about police violence um, and, uh, and sort of the, um, and systematic white supremacy. Um, and it's interesting because uh, the conversation often felt um, too nuanced, you know what I mean? Like, uh, especially for a cartoonist with an art school degree uh, to really weigh in on, um, other than like, police bad, um, not into it, no more police. Um, <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and, and at the Juggalo March, um, I was thinking <laughs> a lot of things. Um, I wish, one, that now in retrospect, I wish I had this brick. Um, <laughs> I could have done things with it. Um, uh, but also, we're in a time um, where, uh, where right acts seem uh, comparatively very obvious. Um, that, uh, that I feel like the problem is not that the issues are complicated um, and that, uh, and that um, in the face of uh, intricate and, uh, and tough problems, um, we feel inertia. Um, so my hope is that um, given this very obvious white supremacist geography that we're all seeing, um, that uh, everyone uh, grabs a brick. I don't know. Um, <laughs> um, makes acts. So uh, thanks very much. Oh, shit. Uh, thanks to Silver Sprocket, uh, Ad House, everyone that supported this. Um, uh, what is the last thing? Oh, um, uh, fuck the police. Uh, free all prisoners. Fuck Donald Trump. Thank you. Fuck yeah. Okay, so the, the next award is gonna be Outstanding Graphic Novel, presented by Gilbert Hernandez. You know him, you love him, the co-founder of Love and Rockets. Do you need help? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna move this along. Um, outstanding graphic novel. We have Band for Life by Anya Davidson. Oh, uh, pardon my pronunciation. Eartha by Kathy Malkasian. Malkasian. March, book three, by John Lewis, Andrew Aiden, and Nate Powell. <clears throat> oh, right, this is here. My Favorite Thing is Monsters, by Emile Ferris. Oh, yeah, like, like that belongs in this list. Uh, Tetris, by Box Brown.
Thomas. See, I told you. My favorite thing is monsters. Emil Ferris. get to say please hold my brick just to Simon but please hold my brick um you thank you wow you know you're, you're gonna make this uh damn you for making an old lady cry um uh I really appreciate this I didn't know uh, I could have a tribe I didn't know that and uh you folks have more than been my tribe uh you've shown me tremendous acceptance and you've uh, you're so wonderful when I do get the chance to walk around and see the kind of talent I'm beside. And this was, you know, being next to these people, I'm breathless with uh, the honor that you did me because these were wonderful uh, people to be beside for this. Um, that's a big part of the honor. And you are also incredibly talented. I sometimes look at the younger ones of you and I think, my God, I wish I had been so smart at 23. <laughs> It wasn't. Um, and I just I wanted to thank some people who came into my life. One of them started out, came into my body, and then came out and helped me. My daughter, Ruby Ferris. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, then the, the second person that helped me with the book, uh, I was uh, uh, 10 years old. I was in a body cast, and it was my friend Crystal Powell who defied the racial lines and a black woman came to my house every day because I couldn't see anyone. And she banged on the door until somebody let her in so she could see me. She's not here tonight, but I love her so much. Um, she... And then, uh, then when I was going so broke, as you all know, and I know every single one of you know this thing, when you have a dream about something you want to create, you just put it all in. And if you don't eat, and if there's no electricity, and if you're getting evicted, oh well. Um, all that was happening to me. And this man over here, Kurt Devine, just really, really pulled my ass out of the fire. And I thank him so much. Um, and then, and then I had no publisher for this book. The publisher kind of backed out. They were like, oh, thanks for the 800-page graphic novel that was supposed to be 200 pages and was supposed to come to us four years ago. Um, <laughs> thanks, uh, Pantload, for that. You, we don't have a publisher anymore. And I, but they were very nice. Let me keep the money. And, you know, that was, wow. And, uh, and then Gary Groth, you know, Fanographics, oh, who are amazing and honored this book in every single way that was required. Um, and the people there, unbelievable. Jack Cohen among them, um, an amazing force, uh, a beautiful force for comics um, and for people. And, uh, you know, everyone there, Eric Reynolds, uh, Jacob Covey, who told me that my, you know, I've learned to be, I've always been relatively humble, but he said, you know, I really love this cover you designed, the first one I designed for the book, which I knew immediately meant, it so sucks. <laughs> and I was like, does that mean it sucks? And he was like, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so he redesigned it, and I, I followed along. I was, I'm so thankful I did. Um, and uh, I don't know, I'm probably forgetting somebody. Is there somebody here I'm forgetting to thank? I'm, I, I, I'm terrified of that fact. But thank you, SPX. Uh, thank you, Warren. Thank you, Linda. Um, thank you, the Greens are over there, wonderful people who have been extremely supportive. Uh, I just want you to all know that, um, you know, I'm, I'm, if there's somebody here who's maybe not 23 and you have a dream, just really give it all you got. Uh, there are such things as late bloomers. Uh, like I say, I'm sure the Germans have a 26-letter word for what it is I am. And, and I want to know that word because there's a category for us. You know, not all people who figure out who the hell they are are 23. Some of us are ancient, and we're still figuring it out. But anyway, I want to thank you very, very much for reading this book. Here's something that happens, and you know this. I'll be fast. Your energy the energy of reading the book and the imagination you gave it 
accretes around it in a mysterious way to make it larger. I feel that sometimes at night. Okay, so we're really intimate. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Okay, two more to go. Uh, next up is the award for artist uh, being given by uh, Jillian Tamaki, three-time Ignatz winner and author of This One Summer, Super Mutant Magic Academy, and Boundless. Hi, everybody. Um, just gonna get right to it. I know we have to the bar to get to the vape pen, the cuddle party. <laughs> We need to move it along. Um, okay, so the, uh, the nominees for Outstanding Artist are uh, Pablo Aladel for P uh, Paradise Lost. <laughs> Emil Ferris for My Favorite Thing is Monsters. <laughs> Manuele Fior for The Interview. Karen Katz for the Academic Hour. And Barbara Yellen for Ermina. Oh, they, were, they weren't lying. It's a little difficult to, to open. Emil Ferris for My Favorite Thing is Monsters. Everything I said before was a lie. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> kidding. I'm totally kidding you. Uh, um, I'm completely kidding. Thank you uh, very, very much. This was, um, you know, this is the trajectory for this is um, this, as some of you know, is regaining the ability to draw. And so this is crazy. Thank you. I really appreciate it. This is gonna sound silly, but if you haven't listened to her Fresh Air interview, I highly recommend it. Oh my God, I cried while listening to it at the gym the one time I went to the gym. Never went back <laughs> after that. So the last award is gonna be for Outstanding Collection, um, given by uh, the author of the ongoing series, Pencil, Paper, Life, whose name is not on here, Summer Pierre. <laughs> The humble story collection uh, often takes second fiddle to the great graphic novel, and yet some of the most brilliant, daring, uh, deep work goes into the story collection. So I'm very excited because all of these artists greatly exemplify that. So the nominees for Outstanding Collection are The Complete Neat Stuff by Peter Bagg, Johnny Wander, Our Cats Are More Famous Than Us, by Anant Hirsch and Yuko Ota. <laughs> Hip Hop Family Tree, Volume 4, by Ed Pisker. Time Clock, by Leslie Stein. Boundless by Jillian Tamaki. This is hard. Man. 
And the winner is Johnny Wonder, a non-perishing Yuko Ota. This. Hi guys! Wow, there's a lot of you. So first, thank you, thank you, like to just God, all of you, and and like thank you to everybody else who was nominated. You guys are incredible. Um, I know I'm extremely quiet. I'm gonna get close here. Um, so the Johnny Wander Omnibus um, is like over 400 pages long, and we've been affectionately calling it the Brick. So <laughs> it's nice to have an award uh, that matches it. Um, also, uh, I have been doing comics for like 17 years, since I was like 15 years old, which tells you exactly how old I am. Um, and um, Anant and I have been collaborating for nearly 10 years, and this is, I think, the first award we've ever won. Um, and not, not counting the KFC Double Down Award that we <laughs> received at uh, Web Comics Weekend like five years ago. So uh, thank you so much. Um, also, um, George, this award is for you because we literally wouldn't be able to do any of this uh, without your help. So thank you, George. Thank you. Uh, I'll try to make this quick because I know there's, there's two of us. Um, I grew up in Maryland. Uh, my first SPX was at the old location in downtown Bethesda. Um, the first time I went there, my parents dropped me off because they didn't want to have anything to do with it. Um, and I waited in line for like an hour to see Jeff Smith. Um, the memory is really vivid for me because he really took his time when I got there. He really took his time. He gave me his full attention. And in hindsight, I kind of realized, you know, I didn't look like anybody else that was there. But he really made me feel like I could do comics. Um, uh, years later, after that, we started collaborating, um, and at a later SPX, uh, Hope Larson introduced us to our first editor. Um, and now, you know, receiving this award, it feels very, very full, full circle. So uh, thank you very much, SPX. Uh, we really uh, love this show a lot. So. Thank you. Sorry, I'm gonna be really, really fast. Um, one thing, like, like, like Anand said, um, when we were starting out, um, there really was not a lot of people who looked like us, and like making this comic, which is just a slice of life comic that is just about us and our daily lives, where we're just like two people who don't really look like anybody else. Um, it really means a lot to us to be seen. So thank you, thank you so much. All right, that's it. Uh, Shannon Wheeler has the drink tickets, so first one to him. Uh, and <clears throat> thanks again uh, to all of our presenters. Thanks to Warren, thanks to Dan for organizing this, and thanks to all of you for coming out and supporting and, and you know, rocking the vote and whatever. So let's go party.